guys, it's Jake. We're back in the Holland Built shop with another video powered by Senka Sen. Today, we're gonna be looking at designing and building a hinged upper bar setup for our door assembly on the car. So let's get into it. So I've made some progress since our last build video, so let's go over those really quick. First of all, I got the engine is now actually in. I got one last mount, so we're actually mounted to this engine plate. I have the back side of it mounted to the original motorcycle mounts for the engine. I'm working on the front engine mount now. Uh, the transmission is now in, and it's on a custom built bell housing. I gotta add some gussets into that, but we have the rear of the transmission is gonna get mounted in there. But today we're gonna be focusing on putting in our last upper bar on our door, but we're gonna make this on a hinge so that it opens up. So I've already pre-bent this bar and cut it kind of down to length. We're gonna be putting it in somewhere in here where it opens up. So it gives us easier access into the driver cockpit. We're gonna also mirror that on the passenger side. So let me grab some magnets and get this bar kind of held in place where we're kind of thinking. So uh, we'll go from there. So I won the wrestling match with the magnets and we got the bar kind of in place where we were gonna want it. What I'm looking at is that we have this bend. I'm trying to kind of chase out this little point out here, this node that we have in the chassis and give ourselves some shoulder room in here when the store is actually closed. But what we're gonna be doing is we'll triangulate this area with this upper bar so that this area right here is gonna be all on a hinged assembly that has an easy egress for the driver and passenger. This bar, we're gonna kinda of have a nice straight slope in here. We don't want this kinda of kicked up or kicked down. And then lastly, we're gonna be putting in a hinge in this area. But this hinge, I'm gonna make it with some bushings so that it's structurally sound and can contain an impact since we're trying to protect the driver and the passenger. We don't want this to be on like some door hinges. In the back here, I actually purchased um, a standard door latch for an automobile. But we're gonna be flipping and reversing them we're gonna put this on the back side, back in here. You can kind of see where I dreamed it up before I ordered this part. And then the pin on for this latch is gonna be mounted to this upper bar right here. This pin's gonna be dual purpose for the mounting. We're actually gonna gusset in this area. So when you shut the door, it's got a positive flange on this side there, it won't go through. And then the latch with this pin is gonna make it so the door won't open up. So I'm gonna grab some cardboard. We're gonna start doing that initial cardboard to CAD phase, where we're just gonna get the overall shapes so that we can take it back to CAD, knowing where the geometry needs to be and design these parts. So let's go to get that cardboard. So now we're kind of in this hinge area. Let's start with this first. So I wanna gusset this area in. It's gonna be kind of dual purpose, right? We're gonna gusset this area in so that we have good strength in this corner, but we're also gonna keep a big U shape out of it. And within that U shape, we're gonna have that bushed um, hinge in there. So I wanna kinda hold this up and I wanna find, we have center line of the pipes. So let's mark our center lines. And then let's kinda hold it up to where we kinda like the two kinda coming together here, right? So we're gonna mark this. This pipe kinda comes down. And we're also gonna tie back up in here. And then we're gonna have this U channel here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark on the back side kind of where that hinge is. Start, so I kind of have a mark there. So we're just gonna transition those out. If we, um, we look at that, that's where our pipes are gonna come together. So if we're gonna have a hinge, say somewhere in here, we're gonna end up gusseting with a U shape that looks like this. So let's kind of, let's cut this out now with some scissors here and see how this looks. My wife doesn't know that I have these scissors. We're back here now. So we can kind of see kind of what I'm thinking here that this will get cut out. Well, it'll actually get boxed in. But I think that that's actually a pretty good shape and we look like we got the pipe coming in at a decent angle. Um, I think we're gonna have a little bit of flexibility to get everything kind of trued up. We'll be able to spin the pipe and get that corner up at the very end before we like weld up that joint. So I'm pretty happy with that one. 
Let's go get another piece of cardboard. We'll head back there and find out where that, uh, that gusset in the back needs to be. And then we'll just get everything into CAD. So our last cardboard template before we're gonna go to CAD is we're gonna try to figure out where this needs to be within the car. Um, I've gone ahead and kind of marked out how big the gussets are that I'm gonna have in here. Um, some of them are kind of behind this, but I kind of traced them out. But what we're gonna be looking at is I want that, this area right here to be right on the back side of this hinge here. So I think I'm gonna have my pin be somewhere in here. So let's go ahead and try to sneak this piece of cardboard in here. And we're just gonna mark, mark these up. We don't have to have it all the way out. I'm gonna grab some angles with a gauge that I have here in a second. So we're just gonna end up tracing all these out. So this is going to be, we'll, we'll label this one door bar. This one down. Down bar. So when I go back in to CAD now, this is going to be mostly just, we'll reverse this and get it kind of in that area in the CAD. So this is kind of a hard one to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take an angle with a gauge right here. We're gonna write in this angle that we have here um, so that I can be pretty precise with that in the CAD. And then um, once we cut this all out, we can take this in there and I can just reverse these mount, uh, these points in space into my CAD to kind of reverse this area and just rebuild this area in the CAD. It'll make a little bit more sense when I'm showing you guys in the CAD off the cardboard. So let's go ahead and take this uh, measurement and then I'll see you in at the computer. So the cardboard templates that we just took enabled me to replicate the tubing setups, both for our hinge side and our latch side. So let's look at our hinge side first. Um, we essentially have that A pillar bar that is gonna be coming off the roof line that comes down, and then this is one of the initial door bars that goes out to that node. And we want that upper bar for the door to come in pretty much perpendicular um, to the ground um, or, parallel, or parallel to the ground, right? So we're gonna have that kind of come in. Um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to make an insert, like a Heim insert, that is going to have a bushing in it. Originally I thought of bearing, but it, it, bearing is going to have too much play this way, so we're going to do a nice solid bushing. Um, this is going to actually be inserted into the tube, and then we can weld up that seam so we have a nice lot of strength there. What we're going to do is we're going to have a bent part here that is going to get tied into this back gusset, and we're going to tap and slot that, as well as have a gusset on the inside and then that front gusset. This front side is gonna be open, obviously, so that that bar can kind of come out into its natural position. And then when this hits that corner, it's gonna be a natural stop for that door. So we're gonna move from there. So let's look at the latch mount. So the latch is gonna be, I have this bar pulled back a little bit right now. I have a couple of weird things going on here, but I haven't proven out a little bit. But we have this gusset here, and then more importantly, we have what the holder is for this latch here. So if we're gonna look at the latch body, you can see how that latch body is gonna sit inside that, that, uh, that sheet metal piece that we have here. Um, so Senka Sen's got a really cool new thing. What we can do is we can order templates from them, just like I normally cut them on the, my own personal laser. They now offer hardboard, which is the traditional one that I use, which is more of a darker wood or uh, a cardboard, which is like a thin stock cardboard, if you think of it like a cereal box, that kind of thickness. We're gonna go ahead and order hardbo hardboard templates just to test out that service from Senka Sen and see how it looks. What that's gonna enable us to do is what I always do is I can actually bolt this entire assembly together with that hardboard and pretend like it's a metal and make sure everything looks good clearance wise. With the cardboard ones, like I said, they're thin stock, like cereal box, so they're really good for checking hole patterns, overall templates, but not necessarily as great for a structural type template like the hardboard is. So now that we have these and um, we want to check the fit on the car, let's go ahead and save the DXFs and put them into Senkut Sen's website like we always do, choose that hardboard material, and get those templates in the mail so that we can uh, check this design, and then we'll go to the metal. So check it out, we got all the hardboard templates back from Senka Sen. 
This is a super cool way to check your designs before you actually order them in metal in a cheaper method. Uh, if we want to compare it, so we have this hardboard template. This is that outer gusset that we designed. We have really nice clean edges. They're going to be exactly like when we order them in metal. We can see here with that template, I mean, my design ended up changing a little bit, but everything looks really good. I ended up actually already gluing up. This is our design for the hinge, and I glued it up already. One thing that I did learn is that we need to end up trimming this off. Um, only because if I end up uh, wanting to take this out, there is no way to get this one out because it can't slide out of this little pocket here. So we're going to end up trimming this up and rounding this corner here on the final design. Everything else looks really good. I ended up having to pull back this side also because it was interfering with the door bar a little bit. We can trim the door bar up a little bit too in the final design. Everything looks really good. This is an awesome way for when you check yours. It's just like what I've done with my personal laser, so now you have access to the same exact technology that I have here in my shop through Senka Sen. So go check out that hardboard design. I'm gonna go ahead and order these in metal now, and we'll get to the final part of this build. I'm so excited with how all these laser cut parts look. We have these awesome bent parts um, straight off of a CNC brake, so we know that they're right. Let's, uh, let's look a little bit here. One thing is I did have to tab in a little bit of the design here since this angled part right here is not parallel to our bend line. I had to give them a parallel line. So we're gonna just break these off and we'll grind those nice and smooth. Um, another thing is that these are mirror images of a part. So when you put them into Senka Sen's website, you can put the up and down on your bends. I like to put a note in when I have mirror parts that this part is a mirror of this part. I think it helps with those uh, CNC operators and stuff. They don't have to do redundant setups. They can just flip the part over. Um, or at least they know that they're the same and they're not trying to decipher if this part is slightly different than this one. This helps them out a little bit in their end. Uh, another thing let's look at is I actually made the high, or this Heim slash uh, hinge on CNC lathe. So I went ahead and turned that down just like in the model. I put a bronze bushing in here and then I made two spacers the trick thing about these spacers is that they'll actually touch in, touch in the center. And this gap right here is 20 thousandths less than our bronze bushing. So when these actually are all the way seated fully in here, and they have a nice tight fit so that we don't have a lot of slot, we can actually move this back and forth about 20 thousandths of an inch. That's gonna allow us to tighten this bolt fully on here and have a nice tight fit but then have the hinge still be able to rotate in the end so we can have everything nice and tight. We don't have to pin anything. So let's go ahead and clean these parts up, prep them for welding, and then we're gonna start with the hinge side and put the hinge in, pack it in, and then we're gonna work back over and we have to end up putting all the latch assembly together so that everything is together all at once when we do the final weld to make sure that everything's held in place and we're not trying to fit and move anything. So let's get over to the welder, do our prep. We had a lot of parts come together all at the same time here, so I had to do a lot more massaging than I was originally intending. The overall length of this bar is kind of critical, so I had to do some trimming back here to make sure that it allows itself to come into the cage. I actually think I need to do a little bit more trimming, but right now it's actually kind of wedged in there and holding itself where I want it. So I'm gonna leave it exactly like that, and then we'll do that trimming once the hinge is on. The, so the hinge actually inserts itself into this tube right here. So we actually have that hinge comes all the way into this body here. I'm not gonna do a plug weld, I'm just gonna go ahead and simply weld around this outside seam since we're not gonna have any strength that's requiring a plug weld. Um, so let's go ahead, I'm really happy with the angle of this. Right now I'm looking at it kind of from a cosmetic standpoint. Wherever I place this bar, I'm just gonna make sure I match it on the other side. So I'm gonna throw some tacks in this corner here. I'm gonna throw a couple tacks on my tube here. And then we're gonna see how this actually hinge opens up and what it cosmetically looks like when it's open. So let's get into it here. All right, so let's check it out here. We can take these magnets off. This door should be actually kind of on there. So now we can open it up. 
We have a door that opens. Let's right back down into our seam. So we have a little bit of play, but that's actually gonna be okay. We're gonna end up tying it into that um, latch on the back side. So I'm pretty happy with that. It'll probably get a little bit of play gone when we uh, get all this welded up also. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna throw two more tacks on the back side here and then we're gonna move on to this latch. So now that we're onto the latch side of the build, we have two different assemblies that we're looking at. The first one is the actual latch setup that's gonna be on the roll cage. And then we also have the pin setup that's gonna be on the door. So let's go ahead and start with the actual latch setup. So I like to use the hardboard because I get kind of confused sometimes on how I actually designed it and how things are going together. So I can kind of look at how I glued it up earlier and that reminds me of what I was doing. It's easily forgotten sometimes in the shop. So the latch is gonna kind of slide in here. Once it's all assembled, we can actually take things apart, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and put a couple bolts in it just to hold ourselves into position. This thing's gonna kind of hold itself together as we want to weld it. All these band-aids, I look like a hack job. All right. So we're gonna do those two. I don't think we need all three in there because you know, two line up, all three line up. So we want to get those kind of, I don't know, decently tight. We have a little bit of flexibility in there. So now that we have that latch, it looks, oh man, it looks gorgeous. Um, the last piece is we just have this little gusset here that's going to go in that corner. So I can kind of see orientation wise, it's going to go in here. And then I have, oh, I actually have it flipped over. Um, we have that little tab in there that kind of indicates in. And then I have just another little tab here. I gave myself some room in that corner just because we're not going to be able to be inside on that radius there. So I gave myself a little relief for that bend. So this all looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put a small little tack welds on each one of these corners. And then I'm gonna come back over here and tack weld these. And then we can come flip it over and we have that tab and slot that I put on the other side. As always, I extended it out a little bit. So we already have that filler, filler material there. And, um, and then once we get done with this, we'll get right back into it with assembling this here on the bench. And then we're gonna take it to the car. So now that we got that latch montage done, we're gonna be working on now the pin montage. This pin montage is gonna be ended up, it's gonna be a gusset right here in this corner. And so the pin's gonna actually stick through on the back side, and then it's gonna dual act as a stop on the outside to make sure that the door doesn't transfer all the way through into the driver. So if we're gonna be holding it up like this, we're gonna lay it down flat on the table. I have a slotted hole so that this pin can kind of be adjustable. And then I'm gonna actually get rid of the original pin nut and we'll just do a lock nut on the back side, but we'll use that for right now, especially for welding. So I'm gonna use some magnets to kind of help me hold this where I want it. And we will weld it up. So now that everything is prepped, I have that outer montage that we did and the inner one. Uh, right now it's the moment of truth. We're gonna see if all the geometry works without you know, the pivot kind of coming in and latching correctly. So I'm gonna put a couple light tacks just in case we need to change something. And then we'll see if it pops open when I unlatch it. So let's do a little bit of welding. We're in that moment of truth now that uh, we got a couple light tacks just in case we need to change anything but everything should be tight enough that we can actually check the linkage. So let's take these clamps off and see how this hinge and latch setup works. So it's got a little bit of play in the latch, but I, I expected a little bit, but it seems to be latched up nicely. Underneath here is the hinge for the latch. I'm gonna run a cable forward so that the driver can actually pull it from uh, the forward position. But uh, if we're pulling on this and I hit the latch, it comes up. Looks really nice. We have a lot more welding to do here. Close it back up, nice and tight. I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up welding. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.